it's time to polish up on some motorhead methodology. By extension, trunk beds. Tonneaus will also be covered. Then we'll take a swipe at wiper blades, next. up a little bit there, buddy. No, this is doing fine. But boy, I'll tell you, look at how much area you cover here. This is pretty simple. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Motorhead Garage. Believe it or not, and Sam can't hardly believe it, you caught me working. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna go check out some headlights. All right. Folks, you know, you get a car, you wanna keep it looking nice, so you take it to a detailer, and they can detail it out. Well, if you're in the professional detailing business, I've got something here for you. We got Kevin McLaughlin here from Buff Pro, and Kevin has got a new machine here that makes detailing a car much, much easier. Tell me a little bit more about this. I like the way this handles. Well, the basic principle of this machine is a little bit different than the standard machine, which is a rotating action. Mm -hmm. This is an axial action, so you're not leaving any swirl marks with the machine. You can actually remove swirl marks that are already there, cuts down a step out of your process of doing the cutting and then doing the swirl removal. Right, and one thing I like about this machine is it's not very heavy, it's pretty light, but it covers a large area, yes. as you can see. And of course, it's got a little skirt right back here, so as this works, you don't get any of the uh, compound or the polishing compound blowing back on you. But it leaves no swirl marks, so it just Correct. cuts out a step here, so it decreases the time that you're gonna spend doing this. Yep. Now, you can hold this, it'll just uh, stay yep. anywhere you want it. Now, how fast will this go? This will go up to about 2,700 RPM. It is variable speed, but we generally work at about 2,000 RPM, yeah. which is about a number three on the dial there. So you can go ahead and turn it up. A little bit more. That's about where most people use it. That way you can really get it done and you don't have to worry about burning the paint either, right? As long as you keep it moving, there's no chance of burning the paint. Okay, and this will cover like over the edges? With yes, it will conform to the, to the shape of the car. All right, now that works out pretty darn nice. Now you've got different... Different pads for it. Anywhere from a heavy cutting pad, which is our power pad okay. for excessive swirl marks and our scratches down to a medium pad. That's right. our polishing pad, which is our general duty style pad. Okay. And then our finishing pad would be for more of a wet look finish. So what we're doing right here, this paint is not in bad shape at all. In fact, it's in pretty good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. Correct. But if you got a, uh, a paint that's got a lot of oxidation on it, pretty bad yes. shape, then you'd want to use your heavier pad. Right, heavy oxidation would be with the medium or our power pad. Now this not only will do just paint as well, but you know one of the other problems we have when we're detailing cars is, of course, these headlights right here, this plastic on here gets all fogged up, so you want to make sure you get that fixed, and this will do it as well. You know, Dave, I got these headlights on this little uh, HHR, and I'll tell you what, what we got here is their Amber Medium Correction Compound from Buff Pro. And you can see how glazed this is. Now this machine is actually a pretty good sized machine, but it works pretty good. You even have a trigger lock to keep running. I'm using medium speed good. Well, I'll start with one to rub in the compound. Okay, there you go. Is that something I learned from Davey? Yes. Oh, I'm throwing some stuff here. Now you can speed it up to three or four. All right, as you can see, a little bit of work on that. It's really, really a lot different. This was pretty nasty. Now you can see the bulbs. It's gonna project the light down the road. It's a great service to offer. You just wipe this stuff off. It's a great way to save a lot of money and make these headlights safe. And this, I can see there's countless uses for this. Uh, there are. Uh, there's uh, anything big and flat, RVs, planes, boats. Uh, it works tremendously well on those as well. On uh, gel coat, and, uh, Corian countertops. Now, the only thing is I'm gonna take a lot of flack from Dave because he didn't make a mess and I did. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up, do the other side so this car looks good. Stick around, we got a lot more coming to Motorhead Garage. We'll be right back. That did a pretty nice job. This thing was nasty too. It was. This edition of Motorhead Garage presented by Low Car Performance Products is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. 
Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. OPG, the world's largest source for GM A-body parts and accessories. And by Motovicity, 100% wholesale, 0% retail. Hi. You do a great job on that, man. Slips in, put your pin in, you're done. It takes real skill to do that. Exactly. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, Sam just inserted something here that you're going to want. And, you know, a lot of you guys have pickup trucks. You'll try to haul all kind of things in there. A lot of times, though, the load is a little bit longer than what the bed will handle. Well, we got the guy here that has invented something that really takes the problem away. Brent Erickson here. And, Brent, welcome to the show. Tell us about Big Bed. Well, the, the Big Bed kind of fit into my corporate plan. We're specializing in cargo control. And uh, with the pickups being short today and... Uh, everybody's having a problem you know what do we do with a long sheet of plywood whatever so we've invented the big bed to extend that load and make that loading application a lot easier show us how it works here pull this pin out i know that yep. much yeah what? you did good on that this is a patented item we've been working on this for quite a while so uh, all you do is simply lift it up here spread it out you're pretty much where you want to be Okay, and I think it takes the same pin you used there. Yeah, and you lock that so it doesn't rock back and forth. Absolutely. With Ford, Chevy, Toyota, whatever, the tailgate height sometimes varies, so we've got some adjustment points mm -hmm. here to take up that slack and make it uh, fit your particular That's application. Stout. We're looking at what, 400 pound capacity? 400 pound capacity. Wow. All right, so when you have the bed down, you can see now you've got room for 12 foot, 14 foot, 4 by 4s, 6 by 6s. Yeah, look at all that tubing there. You got you can put that on there. Yeah. You know, for you guys in the construction trade, you know, you got uh, sheets of drywall, these twelve foot sheets or whatever. All this uh, white tubing, all that type of thing. This is called PVC, Dave. PVC. Yeah. Looks like white tubing to me. Yeah. And this could get pretty heavy when you. Yeah. Yes. When you got a load of it, you know, and your pickup truck's not always empty bed, and a lot of like I say, a lot of trucks some of them have an under six foot long bed. Now, tell me about these gizmos here. Well, this is a product we've had around for a little while. It's a retractable ratchet. Like ordinary ratchets, you have all this webbing left over, blown in the wind and everything. Mm -hmm. the, the retractable acts like a tape measure. You pull out what you want, you do your application. It's got a button here. You just push the button, retract back in. That's great. Don't get all that mud and grease all over your street. And I see we've got hooks all over this yeah. thing to tie it down. Yeah, we've got uh, some hooks here for like if you've got some load of wood on here, some plywood, whatever, over to the other side here. We lock it down there. And now you just touch the button there and it takes up the slack. You pull into ratchet mode here. There you go, down the road you go. You're tight, you get where you want to go, you undo it, undo your hook, hit that button again, retracts up. Right. That's great. These are great. Now how do you get these things? Uh, we are just setting up some distribution now. If you happen to need one or want one, just go to ericksonmfg.com and we're going to have a list of distributors or retailers across America and Canada that will have this in stock. Now, what about the guys who, you know, we've got a canoe sitting here. What about these guys are out hunting and fishing and all that? They got to carry their canoe. I see them draped all over their trucks, on top of their cars, all this type of thing. How's that work for this? The big bed's the answer. Why don't we put it in, Dave, and uh, we'll strap it down and show them how it works. All right, let's get this out. Now, this isn't the only way you can use this, is it? Brian? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of guys needing them for the RTV markets. You know, they're the farmers going into the bush, a sportsman that wants to take a small boat back into the stream. Maybe he wants to put a piece of plywood on it, and he's got something he wants to haul out of the bush back to the truck. Anyway, Brad, I want to thank you for stopping by and showing us the big bed. Hey, we got more coming here on Motorhead Garage. Stick around. I love these straps. <laughs> oh, I love these things. Yeah, aren't they nice? Yeah, really good. <laughs> So who would chop a classic muscle car? Well, I'll tell you who, Mike Spitzer would. Why would you do that to this classic Roadrunner? Uh, we were just trying to make a pretty swoopy little car out of it, and uh, so we chopped the roof about two inches, we pancaked the roof about two and a half inches, we leaned the front pillar back about four degrees. From the door jam back to the trunk, that's a 65 Chevy Impala roof. 
So it's 65 Impala in the back, 70 Roadrunner in the front. What was wrong with the original Roadrunner back? I didn't like the wavy back wind in it, so we decided to put a flat wind in the back. What moves this car? It's got a 632 426 style Hemi in it. It made about 780 horsepower on the dyno, and it has a 500 horse nitrous hit with it. So it's, a, it's pretty steamy when you pour the nitrous to it. In fact, when we get it back to the shop here, we're going to put a traction management thing on it, because anything under 45 mile an hour, and you stand on it and throw the nitrous at it, it just blazes the tires. So that's not good. Well, Mike, I know you're a racer at heart, and this truly is a race car right down to the roll cage that you've integrated into the chassis, right? Yes, we built an all-round tube chassis. The cage is tied into the floor area, and down the center of the car is a major round tube construction to give it a lot of support. The reason we've done all this is we want to run some of them standing start mile runs because uh, she'd run about 210. I tell you what, this Roadrunner would never get caught by the Coyote. Monterey Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Hey, welcome back, folks. You know, in keeping with our pickup truck theme and carrying extended loads, you know, we talked about the little bed extender we had. Well, you like to cover them up, too, in the back. And what we have here is an Eagle Tonneau cover from CTA, and we got Mark Naylor here with us. And, Mark, you guys have just started uh, putting these things out not long ago, right? Well, Eagle's a company that's been in business since 1967, so we're one of the oldest strut cap and tonneau cover manufacturers in the nation. Mm -hmm. My partners and I purchased the company recently in March, so we're looking to get back into the business and innovate new and different products in the truck cap and tonneau cover. Well, you got a pretty nice one here, and it's easy to install now. This is all fiberglass, so it's good and tough, and it seals very well, but it doesn't take much to put it on, but there's a couple little tricks you need to know in there, Mark. Yeah. Yep, I guess these are standard, pretty much clamps to clamp on the rail. Yep, standard in the industry. Right, that way you got no drilling, you can put it on, if you take it off, you can have modified the truck at all. Now, tell me where we're going to put these. Well, the cover is attached to an aluminum frame. Okay. And we're going to attach the front section of the aluminum frame to the bed temporarily so that we can open up the, the lid and attach the gas shocks and then we'll be able to get inside and adjust the frame properly and get it all in perfect alignment. Cool. This way, guys like me don't have to crawl inside here and try to attach it, right, Mark? I think so. I was hoping you right. would. And let's see, where are you putting that? Okay. Of course, first thing you want to do, you want to make sure you get it all aligned properly, which we've already done, so now we're ready to go to work. And this is a perfect color match on this. Bingo. Right, now we can lift it up and put our support struts on. Pop it on there, Davey. There we go. There you go. Great, that'll hold it up. That'll hold it up. We can get in the back of the bed and adjust the frame. Put the rest of our clamps on. And you want to put this one here, huh? Right about there. Yep. You missed her. There we go. You got it now? Yep. Am I far enough forward? Yep. Okay, I'll hold this and you can spin it up. I guess these are adjustable stops. Yeah. We're gonna readjust this clamp on the front and get it get it aligned. All right, so we're lined up nice and smooth right there. Right there, and then we'll come back over to the other side and get in alignment, and we should be good to go. Yeah, let me come up and pull this over for you. That looks about just about the same. Okay. Okay. Now, do we have this here close enough, yeah? Yeah, that's good. All right, now, once you have your frame all mounted in here, what you want to do is adjust it, make sure it's all squared up so everything bolts down fine, and then you're almost in business. There's one other adjustment, too. That's right. But you take your top, it's got a nice strap, pull it down, got some nice hydraulic supports that keep it up, it latches securely, and it has a key lock, so you have your expensive gear, your saws, anything you've got in there, it's protected, especially when the tailgate's closed, because this keeps the tailgate from being opened. 
Show them that other adjustment there, Davey. Okay, now once you have it all set up, what you want to do, if you notice right along here, they got these little adjustment tabs. What you want to do is adjust those so that they go up and just barely touch this. What this will do is give it a little extra support, keep it from vibrating, and you have to crawl inside to do that. Not a big deal. But once you have that done, you're in business. Absolutely. Nice, nice top. I like it. We'll pull it down, we'll latch it. Then we'll see who's going to go inside and make those adjustments. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wait, man. I have the wrenches. There you go. Nice top. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll tell you, your Eagle Tunnel covers are really nice. Well, thank, thank you very much, and it was a pleasure to be here. Well, this will keep everything safe and secure and dry here in the back. we got a lot more coming. Stick around here for Motorhead Garage. I, I need a quarter-inch wrench. All right, you better get your knee pads to get in there, buddy. Oh, you got them. Oh, 7 16th, I mean, I'm sorry. Back in the 40s and 50s, Cadillacs were known for being big, luxurious automobiles. But now, we know Cadillac for its performance. Dave Tucci, you've combined the two, haven't you? Yeah, we've tried to do that. We've taken the luxurious part of the 40s Cadillac and then turned it into the modern performance part of what they're doing now at Cadillac. Well, we've taken the original grill, it used to be one piece casting, and we've cut it all apart, laid it all back, and then streamlined the grill. And in doing that, we had to pancake the hood to make it a little lower. We took about probably 12 inches out of the front nose of the hood itself. We've taken an 06 XLRV supercharged North Star Cadillac and retrofitted, and we hand fabricated the chassis, and we used the whole XLR chassis suspension components and, and built it underneath this 41 Cadillac. But if it's a Cadillac, I expect it to be comfortable. You've worked on the suspension, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it rides beautiful, but it also has the power if you wanted to take it on a road course. You could. You know, with 500 rear wheel horsepower and, and the six-speed trans we put in it, you can drive it like a Corvette and, you know, probably outperform a lot of the newer cars now. You know, if I was a Cadillac designer back in the 1940s, this is the concept car that I would have built. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by Erickson Manufacturing. Tie it, tow it, load it. We've got you covered. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Eagle Brand, don't get caught topless. And by Buff Pro, a revolution in professional polishing. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, you know, we're always trying to bring you the latest in automotive equipment, and some of the latest things we found are wiper blades. This is called the thermal blade, and this is pretty nice. It's all one piece. The nice thing about it, though, is you can pull the blade out, easy to replace, makes it real simple. And if you look right in here, we have a nice little spoiler. So as that's laying there on your windshield, the air's flowing over, keeps the blade down on the windshield so it doesn't lift up. But we got something even better here. We got Harry Kleinsaucer here, who is the inventor of the thermal blade. Tell us what you did to this one. Well, we have a heating element inside the full length of the squeegee to keep the ice and frost off the, uh, the buildup on the wiper blade, as we're all familiar with the ice buildup. This will never freeze up again. So it's an easy installation. All you have to do is hook it up to a power source. Yes, 10 to 15 minute installation time. All right, well, let's get started. We'll show the folks how it works. Okay. All right, so there's no big problem hooking these up. Here's your blade and here's your wire. What I'm going to do is go ahead, slide this on, just like any other blade. But I'm gonna take my wire now and I'm gonna just thread that down through the arm and then down under the hood and I'll just put a couple little tie wraps down here. That'll keep that out of place and kind of out of sight. Makes a nice insulation. Okay, Sam, you ready to handle the wiring side of this? Absolutely, these are shepherd hooks, they just lock right on, like Dave said, tie the wiring. Now we're gonna to go to a switch ignition source in the fuse panel, pop the hood, will you? Okay. These are really easy to wire, great set of instructions, a nice little diagram. What we're gonna do is go into the fuse panel, the electrical panel, and probably the one under the hood is the best one to go to. What we need to do is find a switched source. So I'm gonna Harry, I'm gonna let you be the ground right here. Go to your DC volts. 20 volt scale, make sure you're on DC, okay? And then we'll go across each fuse. We're gonna find a fuse that has no battery power with the key off. Dave will turn the key on. I'll find one that's powered, we'll piggyback. Our red wire 
that goes this. So anytime you turn the ignition switch on, fire the engine up, when it's in the on position, power will be sent to these heated thermal blades. They have a thermostat that comes on at what, about 35 degrees? Yes, right around 35. Which is where you have the ice and snow build up, particularly when you're driving. If you have a remote start in the morning, push the remote start, the engine's running, while the car's coming up to temperature and you're putting on your tie, you get ready to go to work, bingo. It really heats the blades up nice, gets rid of the ice and snow, makes you safe going down the road. Dave, how about hitting the switch there, buddy? You got it. All right. Not that far. <laughs> All right, that's our fuse right there. We'll piggyback into that. All right, Dave done a nice job of lacing these wires. Now we're gonna run the two ground wires together right here in this Ford. Happened to be a great little body ground right there. Took the bolt out, put on a ring terminal. I'll crimp this down and then we'll put the bolt in and the ground will be made. Make sure you get a nice good connection there. Check your wire, it's not gonna come out. Put your uh, bolt in. By the way, always have your battery disconnected when you're doing any of this stuff. That way if you strike an arc, you're not gonna short something out and burn it up. I'll put this ground wire in, then we'll go to our fuse panel. All right, just run your wires, make sure you dress them up nice and neat. I'm gonna put some wire cover over this. The two red leads coming out of the thermal blades, which is your power, it's a switch, switch power. We put a butt connector, we got an inline fuse holder, then all I need to do is put this little mini terminal on here, we piggyback into the fuse that's live with the key on, that way the thermal blades have their own fuse protection, it's gonna work great if you ever have a short, the fuse blows, and you're done. Not gonna cause any problems. Dress your wires up nice, put your fuse cover back on. You did a good job. I'm glad you followed all the instructions there, Sam. I, I always do a good job, man. <laughs> he always does. <laughs> Harry, I wanna thank you for stopping by and bringing your thermal blade by. This is a pretty neat deal, I like that. Thank you, thank and you. The good thing about it, when you turn on your ignition, you have power to it, but with that little uh, thermistor in there, why, once it gets cold enough, then the blades heat up, so perfect. You don't have to do a thing, but drive comfortably. Hey, we've run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage. So long. Got that handle, bud? Done, man. I need some wire cover and we'll be all set.